Welcome to Sobcast the Podcast, where I, Christina Wolfgram, beg the question, what even is mental health? This podcast is created in collaboration with Dive Through, a mental wellness company that actually knows what they're talking about. Hello, good evening. I'm sure it's evening somewhere if it's not evening where you are. Let's get started with my little trigger warning. Sobcast the podcast is about the pursuit of good mental health, but we will be talking about some not so good mental health things like anxiety, depression, and walking in the rain listening to Lana Del Rey while you cry. Okay, while I cry. All right, fine. <laughs> um, before I get into the nitty gritty of um, my break updates, I wanted to let you know that I bought a mood ring recently. Um, it's it's big and and just a big mood ring stone, but um, and it's well, it's cute. But I made a grave error, which is that I didn't take the little piece of paper that says what each color means with me uh, home. So I have no idea what mood I'm in right now. I guess I'm just kind of blue green. That probably means full of pizza because I have pizza for dinner, probably, right? What do you think? Anyway, um, if you know how to decipher mood ring colors, uh, please let me know. Find me on Instagram. DM the podcast Instagram. Like, we're we're on the lookout for your messages. Um, yeah, if you have any insight. Also, how do mood rings work? I just realized I need to know that. I'll Google it. I'm Googling it right now. Sorry. I can't go on. I cannot go on until I know. I have to Google this. Because it has to do with temperature, right? I mean, right? Right. Let's see. How do mood rings work? Oh no, now it's just showing me more cute mood rings. That's enough. Okay. Bestmoodrings.com says, Mood rings contain thermotropic liquid crystals inside the stone or the band of the mood ring. These crystals react to changes in temperature by twisting... The twisting changes their molecular structure, which alters the wavelengths of light or color that are reflected or absorbed. The next question is, like, people also ask, do mood rings actually work? Unfortunately, mood rings don't actually work and aren't accurate at all. This is because of two reasons. Mood rings react to external temperature and not just to the temperature of your finger. You could be feeling stressed and overworked, but if you're near a kitchen stove... It could come up as happy and excited. (laughs) Well, you know what? I choose to believe it works. And I will, from now on, be making all of my decisions based on this mood ring as soon as I figure out what it means. It's as simple as that. So, hi. Welcome. I hope you've had a really delightful week. I don't know. Maybe some, like, random good things happened. If you had like a waffle for breakfast at some point, that'd be nice. It's always nice. A waffle. Um, today I'm going to reflect a little bit on how I've been dealing with that old breakup that maybe you remember happened at the end of May, a little bit before Sobcast season two started. <laughs> is definitely on my mind uh when this when the season started um basically this is gonna be an extended how i'm coping i've even made a little list here i'm nervous all of a sudden i think if you watch these podcast episodes on youtube i think you'll be able to tell how nervous i am for an episode based on how much makeup I'm wearing, and I'm currently wearing eyeliner and red lipstick and a ton of blush. Like, that's where I'm at. I'm nervous to talk about this. Um, But the reason that 
I want to talk about it is because especially in the first like month or two when I was trying to just accept that the breakup had even happened, I was searching everywhere for success stories, I guess I could call them. Not necessarily like, oh yeah, like I immediately met the love of my life and it all worked out because I shouldn't have been with that other person who broke up with me. Like more like, I was in a relationship and it didn't work out and now I'm pretty okay. Like I I needed stories like that. So I want to put mine out there for anyone who's in the same position as past me because I do feel a lot better. And I know a lot of that has to do with time. Obviously time heals all wounds or whatever. Was that Dr. Seuss? I don't know. But um, here are some of the things that I've been doing. And I guess I should share where I'm at, huh? Um, I am not crying very easily. I can talk about the relationship and I can talk about the breakup without crying and, and honestly, without it derailing my day. That was not the case at first. <laughs> So, um, that's a really big deal. Um, I have met a lot of people who just know me as me and not as half of a relationship. And I think that has been exciting. And, um, I, I am looking forward to the future and I think that's, been hard to get to but I'm so glad I'm here because I am really excited I thought kind of I would never get over kind of the plans that we had made as a couple and how that's not there in our life and like the stuff we were talking about like I'm okay with none of that happening now and I'm finding my own version of that so does that sound good yeah, it's fine. I just answered my own question. I need to start talking about this. Okay, yes. Anyway, number one, (laughs) the first thing that I've been doing that's been really important to me is I haven't been talking to my ex. Um, We had to stay in touch quite a bit, probably mm, for about two or three months after the breakup because our lives were super intertwined. Um, I think there's still some bills that need to be, like, figured out, but, you know, we lived together. My stuff was at his mom's house and in our old apartment, so I had to figure out how to get all that stuff to move to Portland because apparently I needed to move to Portland. I I did it. (laughs) Um, And... I don't want to make it seem like there are times where I don't, or I don't want to make it seem like there are times where I don't think about getting in touch with him because, I mean, besides us being like a couple, like he was one of my best friends. So there are some memories that I have that like literally no one else will understand And, um, that used to make me sad and I'm trying to think of it now instead as just something really special. Like, oh, like that was a, that was a nice memory. (laughs) Um, and when I am really tempted to text him, I usually just write it down somewhere or in a few cases I've texted a friend instead and just been like, hey, I was going to text this to my ex, but I'm texting it to you now. And then, you know what? Usually that friend is really supportive and kind about it. And it it just helps um, other people see where I'm at also. And that's important. Like, um, not keeping my feelings to myself all the time has been important for me. So I don't feel comfortable sharing my problems. Um, 
in the past, um, I <laughs> actually, I think one time I was dating someone and he broke up with me so in such a like cowardly unclear manner that I actually thought we were still together so I guess I was still talking to my ex at that point and then it was really confusing when (laughs) he was talking to other people too (laughs) um cool uh that's like one of the only times I can remember really like talking to an ex and just being like this sucks don't do it um but that's me personally and 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 I know again this is something that'll take time because maybe we can be friends in fact like I I'm pretty sure we could um and even like people I dated 50 years ago or whenever the last time I was single for the most part, like, if I saw or talked to any of them, I'd love it, so. So, if any of you are one of my ex-boyfriends, please feel free to call if you still have my number or whatever. <laughs> Ooh, actually, I don't know if I'm okay with that. Anyway, moving on. <clears throat> um, oh, not talking to him has helped me discover something about myself, which is that uh, I think me sharing my, like, daily feelings about stuff is very intimate to me, which is kind of ironic because I am sharing all of this on a podcast, but um, there are only a handful of people that I really talk to um, regularly enough that they know how I am day to day. And I think that's just because for some reason that information means a lot to me. And so if I'm sharing it, that is um, very vulnerable for me. Even right now, my shoulders are like up to my ears. I'm like... And that's, I don't know why that is so special to me. So if I kept in contact with him and I started telling him about my days and things like that, I think um, I would just be hurting my own feelings. (laughs) So um, keeping that stuff close to the chest, I think, has been good for me. This is in no way a guide for anyone I I know everyone is different but this is this is my version of that um okay the next thing I've been doing has been really hard and it is giving myself credit (laughs) I hold myself up to like really insane expectations and I don't even know where it came from honestly um, maybe it doesn't matter where it came from. I'm just, I, moving forward, I need to work on it. But, uh, there are days where I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I am not where I thought I'd be in life. Like, I'm so behind, blah, blah, blah. And then I have to kind of take a second and be like, um, you've been making decisions with someone else for, like, many years and now you're making decisions on your own and you've made so many decisions on your own that have worked out and so that means you're okay (laughs) um like also there's been so much change in such a short amount of time that I think I forget that constant change isn't normal sort of what even is normal I don't know that has been very confusing the last few years huh for everyone um I noticed that I was being really hard on myself like I have noticed that but then I had a friend recently tell me like hey like I don't see why you're talking about yourself in this way and then 
um, the more I thought about it, the more I was like, oh yeah, like I am so mean to myself. So I started seeing a new therapist. Wow. You heard it here first. I'm, I'm seeing a new therapist. It's very new. This is my new relationship. Um, I'm not, I don't want to talk too much about it until I think it's official. And that, that was Mr. Just knocking a bunch of stuff off of my bookcase. Hi, Mr. Ugh, he's just too beautiful. I can't stay mad at him. Wow, he's never jumped into the bookcase. This is the first time he's doing it. It's perfect timing, mister. Good job. Oh, okay. Anyway, back to my relationship status, mister. I think I had like my third session, fourth session with her. And I'm pretending like I don't know what date we're on. It was the fourth date. Um, We've been seeing each other for about a month. And she comes off to me as like a very sweet, like almost like cartoon librarian. She's so, I don't know, she's kind of soft spoken and just like super sweet. And um, she told me, and I quote, to stop shitting on myself. so much so that's my new mantra um I will not be shitting on myself (laughs) I deserve to not shit on myself yay um I've also noticed like I have not been good at taking compliments I just think that every compliment is just like someone just being nice and again I think that's something like I could try to find the root cause of but more importantly moving forward I just want to enjoy when people say nice things like that's not too much to ask of myself so working on that um the next thing on my list number three is trying to grieve everything so I think the first thing that I was grieving was like the relationship itself like this little house we'd built together where I'd felt safe um and I'm not saying I'm finished like totally done I don't think grief ever really ends but I do feel less way less tortured by it I think and more importantly I've accepted that it's over which is huge because I don't want to be like one of those people who like in like three years is still like maybe he'll take me back. (laughs) You know what I mean? I think that that is a weight I don't want to be carrying around and I don't want other people to be carrying around because you deserve better. Um, But then I realized there were also so many other things that I needed to kind of uh, have a little funeral for. (laughs) Um take some time, take like a moment of silence for some of these things, like, um, like some of our favorite restaurants, um, I will probably just never go back to unless I make a point of it, um, and it would be in completely different circumstances, um, have taken the time to kind of grieve some of the friendships that I think are going to be really different from now on, uh, which is normal. Um, I had to take some time to grieve some of the plans for our future. Uh, you know, even just things we were kind of daydreaming about that weren't, it's not like we were like signing any contracts or anything, but It was in my mind, especially during quarantine when I just kind of needed happy things to focus on. Um, I have all the jewelry he gave me and this is, I'm trying not to judge myself because I don't want it, 
I don't want to seem shallow or something. Um, I love the jewelry he got me and I don't know, some of it just meant so much like because I'd wear it and I felt like it was representative of our relationship and that, you know, someone would see me wearing like diamond ring, bleh, whatever, and know that I was not available, you know? So I guess I'm still grieving those a little bit. So it's not just, okay, it's not just the jewelry, obviously. It's like what it represented and like kind of this, I don't know, it felt like big steps to be like wearing jewelry. Oh, okay. This, this is like hitting a pain. <laughs> Uh, there are so many things I've realized that I like haven't allowed myself to think about like when I think about like engagement rings or like weddings and stuff it's almost just like oh yeah those are things that just happen to other people and I no not me I don't know oh oh my goodness I'm like I'm gonna end up being like a romantic comedy movie where it's like me Christina She's a working lady with a cat who doesn't believe in engagement rings. <laughs> Something like that. Until one day, she meets an engagement ring engraver who changes everything for her. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> anyway, I've been looking into potentially selling that jewelry or recycling it in some way, making it my own. The internet has a lot to say on the t- on this on this subject. The, the internet's very opinionated about this. A lot of back and forth about do you give the jewelry back? Is it yours? What do you do with it? And I don't know. They were gifts like they're definitely my it's definitely mine. So I don't know. I don't want to wear it because it just feels weird, but I don't know. Maybe it would make someone else really happy. I don't want to just throw it away. Well, like, I would never do that, but Ugh. I think the first ever piece of jewelry I ever got from a guy was in high school on Valentine's Day, and he got me like a like a necklace from Kohl's, and it was shaped like a heart. And I thought that was so great. And I think I might still have it somewhere. <laughs> so I guess jewelry means something to me. The facts of my daily life and jewelry, I guess those are those are really special to me. Um I have also been during this grieving process, I've been trying to like panning for gold I've been trying to pan for gold and it's like the dirt is the memories and the little pieces of gold are what I actually want in the future because I can remember what like we wanted and I can remember a lot of things that he wanted but I have trouble like a lot of people have asked me like what do you want well what do you want now and I'm like I I still, I don't really know. I know a lot of things I don't want. And that's kind of how I've always been. I I think I'm very afraid of things not working out. So I never, like, there have been so few times in my life where I'm like, I want this exact job. Or I want this exact apartment. Or I want to get married and have exactly two kids or like I want to buy a house by the time I'm 33. You know, like I just I I maybe I'm too go with the flow. But um I'm gathering all these little nuggets from these memories and I'm really trying to pay attention to them. I think talking to a therapist and also having I I'm really lucky. I feel like I have like at least like five friends that I could call any time and talk about this with 
like they're not or they're not sick of it yet or they're really good at hiding it (laughs) they just really listen and let me like talk out my feelings and that means oh wow that's gonna make me cry sorry that's just so nice it's what a gift um if you have a friend who's going through things I think offering to listen to them anytime is like really cool especially during meals I don't know why meals are still kind of hard sometimes um I think because I am still getting used to like cooking for myself and I it's become a thing where I haven't really even cooked in this apartment that much like I recently cooked some chicken and I was like wow this is the first time I've cooked I think raw meat here (laughs) it's just really weird um but I think that's because I was cooking a lot during quarantine and and buying enough food for you know three people or whatever and now it's just me and I things go bad in the fridge and I find that depressing and anyway it is the best when I get to have meals with people and like it's been surprisingly wonderful like having coffee in the morning with friends or like yeah it's definitely something if you have the capacity to offer a friend who's going through something I think it's really awesome you don't even have to talk about what's going on in fact I usually don't want to (laughs) you know just just like having some semblance of I I have to stop using the word normalcy normal I don't know what that means but you I think you get what I'm saying I know you you're you're very smart you know what's up okay so actually that brings me to number four which is that I'm trying to share more of myself with my friends and even like my family there was this kind of really deep sadness in the beginning where I was like no one is ever gonna know me like he did and then I realized that I mean obviously he knew a lot about me because he cared and that's amazing and I I don't know I feel like I need to like salute it I just want to like be respectful of the relationship um but you know uh it was also because we spent so much time together so like for instance uh when I was first staying in Portland I was living with a friend and she has small forks and she has big forks and I was like I don't know why this is important for me to tell you but I always like the big fork (laughs) um and my ex always knew that about me and he always got me the big fork sometimes he would take the small fork because I got the big fork and like for some reason that was very special to me and just like that I was less alone because I told her that (laughs) And so I've been trying to do that more and more, and actually it's made those little pieces of information um, less precious to me in a really healthy way, I think. Like, I don't know. I, th- I don't know if it was like the isolation this past year. I keep saying this past year, like, I think it, ugh, th- this is a whole other thing, but like the way that time has passed, like, I don't even know what... <laughs> the past two years when when did this start I don't and by this I mean the pandemic and feeling safe unsafe isolated anyway so now you all know that I like the big fork and I like that you know that (laughs) uh it's it's not that special of information like I I should be able to share that with people so Um, And speaking of other people, I have also been working really hard on trying not to project my problems onto other people. Like when I'm meeting new people, 
especially, and they have stuff in common with my ex. I think I, and this is a, probably my brain trying to protect me, but I have a tendency to be like, oh, well, if they had this and this happen in their childhood, that probably means they have this and this problem, and we all know how that works out. That's so unfair. That's, that's very unfair. <laughs> and if people treated me that way, I'd be so sad. So i um, trying to be really mindful of that. And it's it's kind of like sometimes I feel like I'm solving a puzzle in my own brain when I realize that I've done that. And then I can like actively be like, I am not going to think that anymore. <laughs> that feels so good. Control over your thought? What? It's almost like... There, I have some, like, I have control over my own life. That's, no. Okay, whoa. Okay, we're discovering things together. Okay, so number five on the list. Um, <laughs> I've been trying not to use the word forever. Because at first I was like, I'm going to be sad forever. I'm going to be single forever. I'm going to be alone forever. Um, like, just uh, you very definitive statements <laughs> um, that are already untrue. And um, sometimes, especially when my brain is being more led by depression than my actual mind like when depression's in the the driver's seat um I can really easily fall into like I'm gonna feel like this forever um that's hard to argue with in the moment and it can be really uh, smothering. It's a weird word. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think its cousin is never. I'm never going to be happy. I'm never going to date. I'm never going to meet anyone like that. I'm never going to share myself like that again. Like I'm never going to know what I want like that's not true <laughs> like it's only true if you let it be true so I don't know trying to avoid those words it's fine it never works no I'm just kidding <laughs> okay um number six um <laughs> maybe this is gonna sound kind of obvious but I have been taking care of my mental health in all the ways that I know how. And that really has helped this process. Really, really helped in ways that I'm so surprised by. Um, a big thing is like trying to be mindful and kind of like live in the moment more. Uh, if I just like let myself trip into the past, like it's so hard to come back. And I mean, especially the last few months, like when I look back, all I see are the times when I wish I'd said this or like, maybe we should have broken up back then. And then I wouldn't be here. It just, it's so not helpful at all. Um, and sometimes uh, taking care of my mental health is also just taking care of my physical health. <laughs> um, I moved to Portland on a whim, kind of, and uh, I think as I've as I've been healing from this breakup, I have a little bit been like, "What am I doing here?" <laughs> Wait a second, who made this decision? <laughs> um, but I think the a big part of that is because it's been raining a lot. A lot. It's almost like, you know, it was really sunny when I got here. And actually, it would be sunny until like 9.30 at night. It was stunning. 
I could be outside all day, just be so happy. And uh, it's almost like I should have read the fine print. Uh, Pacific Northwest, it says rain's here. <laughs> rain's here a lot. <laughs> um, and I've been trying to be like aware that that can make me gloomy. So recently I was like, uh, like, I want to go outside. I want to go for a walk. I'm I'm in a phase where I get really bored working out inside. I think because I'm already working in my little space. So then exercising there too just feels like it's not as much fun or something. I just like can't keep my own attention. So I've been really enjoying going outside to, to get my physical activity in. And because it didn't like it didn't feel like I could go outside for a few days. I didn't really do anything for a few days and built up. So um, I made myself go outside in the rain. Well, at first it wasn't raining, but then it was really raining. (laughs) And I got really sad. I basically was walking around crying, listening to the song Ride by Lana Del Rey just again and again and again because for some reason it felt like she understood me in that moment. Like maybe she'd been walking around in the rain too when she thought of it. Um, uh, Part of me was like, this is so pathetic that you're like crying like this. Like why? Because it wasn't even really about anything specific. It was just like, I am just walking around in the rain crying. Like, I can't handle anything. But actually, once I was done, I felt so much better. I felt so much better. I think the the physical activity literally, like, gets negative energy out of my body. And there had been so much built up that it just came out as crying. I mean, thank goodness. Thank goodness. I don't want that in my bones. Ew. Get it out. Get it out. So maybe this is your sign if you've been looking for a sign to go outside and walk in the rain and just let yourself cry or walk on a treadmill, let yourself cry, go in your bedroom, close the door, let yourself cry, get in the bathtub, let yourself cry. I don't know. Maybe it's just time for a little cry. It just really, it just really helps. And then don't be mean to yourself about it. Is like the trick, I think. Is the is the piece de resistance. Um, if you just like let it happen and aren't uh, mean to yourself, <laughs> what a concept. Um, what else I've been doing? Oh, I mean, seeing a therapist definitely step in the right direction for my mental health. Um, and talking to other people. Um, getting sleep is very important to my mental health. Um, taking my medicine at the same time every day, very important to my mental health. Um, making sure I make time for fun. What? I have been trying to get back in touch with my, like, extracurricular activities, if that makes sense. Like, um, I've been trying to sing every day. Even if it's in the shower, like I had stopped singing in the shower. That's so crazy. I I love singing in the shower. So I'm back at that. Um, I've been practicing my ukulele, even though I know I'm not going to talk bad about myself. No, but like, like subjectively or objectively, I always get this too mixed up, whatever. Like it's math that I'm I'm bad at the ukulele like it's it's like science it's fact so that's fine I'm not being hard on myself I'm telling you the facts um what else Uh, oh like spending time with minister trying to keep my space clean is good for my mental health and the I don't even know that I get so much so bothered actually I know that I don't get bothered by mess and that's actually kind of a problem because things will get really messy and I'm not bothered by it so I don't do anything about it and then it's kind of out of control but it's also part of um the trying to be easy on myself so if I just clean a little bit each day I don't reach that point where I'm like oh my gosh you are an actual pig in a pigsty and you're disgusting and how could you let all these dishes be here you (laughs) 
I really am sharing this just in case you're like this. It's possible to not be like this, I think. We're going to find out together, okay? Um, oh, also, I've been... Something big for my mental health has been doing little... I'm going to call it a ritual. That sounds way more magic than I think it is, but I've been doing a ritual um, during each moon phase, so we're not... I don't even know what you call it. I do the do it on full moons and I do it on new moons. And on full moons, I focus on things that I want to let go of, energy that I don't need anymore, habits that I want to break. And on new moons, I think more about energy I want to come in, uh, goals that I want to accomplish, um, and like the person that I want to be. I think, I think about, you know... I want to be kind and generous and I write all those words on a piece of paper and I don't know, it feels productive. And it also brings me a lot of peace of mind. Peace of mind. Wow. Peace of mind is like, like I know we're all like, I want to be happy, but I kind of just want to be at peace. (laughs) Like sometimes that's way better than being happy. I'm just like content what like just okay with everything like like I don't have any problems like I'm not like elated but I don't have any problems like are you kidding me right now hell yeah give me that give me more peace of mind <laughs> um yeah I also usually read do a little tarot card reading during those two and that's really nice I don't know, just in case you were looking for some ideas. Um, Number seven, the the last thing on the list. um, um, The list of ways that I have been getting over my breakup is uh, masturbating. It's masturbating. RuPaul says, if you can't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love someone else? I couldn't agree more. (laughs) That is also good for my mental health, I think. It also, um, it takes away the feeling of like, oh my gosh, I really need someone. Like, how am I supposed to be like a complete person without this other person? I don't know. Just like finding ways to make yourself happy and mentally and physically like is so important. And, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think masturbation is important, like, no matter what your relationship status is. Um, But I've been making it more of an event. And that's been really fun. It's been fun. That's what it should be. It's just, like, fun. (laughs) Um... So, because my mom might be listening to this, I'm not going to get into it anymore. But... Actually, you know what? I think, you know what's cool? I think my mom would be totally supportive of that. So thanks, mom. (laughs) Those are my seven things that I've been doing. That's how I'm coping. I don't think any of them are more important than others. Um, I think they're all working together (laughs) for sure to make me just more okay every day. Um... Just a reminder to myself and to anyone listening to this that, like, grief has no expiration date. And that it's important to remember that two things can exist at once. In fact, multiple things can exist at once in your mind. But, like, you can be grieving something and also really enjoying your life, which I feel like I am. And it feels so good, (laughs) Um, I guess, besides the rain. But you can be happy with your friends You can go out on dates. You can, like, be out there in the world. You can be doing your business. (laughs) That makes it sound like you're pooping in the street. I meant, like, doing my business like a business lady. (laughs) I mean, like, running my business. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) You can be doing your business, too, also. Enjoy it. 
Um, but <laughs> you can be enjoying yourself while you're also grieving and you don't need to feel guilty about that and you don't need to worry that the guilt, I'm sorry, you don't need to worry that the grief means that what you're doing in the moment isn't right for you. That's not true. We got to live in the now. Um, no day but today, as Rent says, the musical. Right? <laughs> so, uh, wow. Wow. I'd love to hear if any of these sparked your interest. If you'd like to hear anything more about any of this, if you thought it was completely not useful and you'd like me to talk about something else, if you want to hear more about my mood ring, like, please feel free to reach out. Um, I will say my personal Instagram direct messages is not the best way to reach out to me because it's just kind of a hot mess in there. I don't know how else to explain it. Um, so if you ever want to email me uh, or send a direct message on the podcast Instagram, I think that's a good way to get in touch. But I, I'm always happy to hear from you so like so like yeah I, this isn't I don't know why I feel like I'm assigning you homework <laughs> please write me a three-page personal essay on why this episode was triggering for you <laughs> I'm kidding I'm so glad you're here thank you for letting me talk this out I actually feel really proud of myself telling you all this um I thought I was gonna feel really sad, but it was a reminder of how far we have come together, and I don't know, it's only going to get better, and then worse, and then better, and then worse, and then better. Like, how great is that? I hope you have the most beautiful week. I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs> that sounds like I'm insulting you. I'm just going to go now. Okay, bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It would super help if you subscribed, left a review, call your grandma, tell her to listen. And if you want more, Sobcast the Podcast, follow us on Instagram. All right, see you next week. Love you. Bye.